Hello learners, I am Dr. Sandhya Kumar and today we shall be talking about the conservation of energy at home. As you all know, we use a lot of energy in a lot of activities during our daily life. Beginning from the morning to ending your day at night, there are numerous things you do that use up energy. And you also know as a fact that the energy resources that we have are very limited. So, if we keep on using the energy at the rate at which we are doing today, the day is not very far off when we will fall short of energy. Even today, you will notice that people in the larger cities and towns are facing a lot of energy crunch. There are power cuts rotation wise or maybe even unannounced causing a lot of hardship to the people. The industries are facing a lot of uh, power shortage as a result the production is suffering. So what is it that you and I can do to help the situation? Well the first thing that we can do is to start at home. The little things that we do, each little contribution that we make helps the larger power sector. So, what can we do at home? The question is quite difficult to answer. But let us take one thing at a time. Where do we use energy in the home? Basically, we use electricity. We use fuel to cook our food. And we use water. I'm sure you can name many, many uh, activities where you use electricity where you use fuel to cook your food, water for washing, for bathing, for cooking, etc. So these are basically the three areas that we will be talking of and how I and you as an individual can help in conserving the electricity, the fuel and the water at home. So first of all, let us talk about the conservation of electricity at home. There is, I'm sure you've heard of the phrase, uh, the phrase called SOS. It actually means save our souls. But when we talk of electricity, it means switch off something. So remember, SOS, every little thing that you switch off at home is helping you to conserve the electricity. And now in summers, what you can do? You can switch off the lights and the fans when you leave the room. When you are in the room, you need the light to work and you need the fan to keep yourself cool. But often we uh, notice that when we leave the room, whether it is at home or even in the office, we leave the fan working. It is on, there is no one to use that uh, air that is circulating, but we forget to switch it off. So remember, make an effort and switch off the light and the fan when you are leaving the room. When we talk of lights, traditionally we used to use a 100 watt bulb or a 60 watt bulb, the yellow light that used to come from the bulb. But if we replace that bulb, the 100 watt bulb with a 40 watt tube light, we get more light and at the same time we save electricity because we are only consuming 40 watts instead of the 100 watts. The advances in Technology have given us CFLs, LEDs and energy efficient tube lights. You see these are the instruments that are available in the market today and we are getting them, if we use them uh, instead of the traditional uh, tube lights that we used at home, we will be able to uh, save about 60% of the power that we were using. So. Just a simple little thing, once your tube light is going out of order or is fused, you can simply replace it by an uh, energy efficient tube light or a CFL or the LED. You get more light to work with and you save power at the same time. The CFL that I just talked about, uh, the full form is a compact fluorescent light. These are better than traditional bulbs because they have larger lifespan, they work longer, they uh, save energy and they also reduce the cost of running them. So next time your bulb goes out of order, get a CFL and replace it. The LED lights are also a new 
uh, option for residential lighting in your homes. You will find they come in beautiful designs. They give much more light than the traditional tube lights do and they are also more energy efficient than the other light bulbs. So when you can, use the LEDs instead of the traditional bulbs and tubes. So in effect, what we have learnt is that the 6 to 8 watt LED or the 15 watt CFL or the 60 watt traditional bulb. It is up to you. They give the same level of light or the luminescence that you use to do your work. So it is up to you to choose what you want to be energy efficient or to consume more energy while you're getting the same level of light. Also, when you're using tube lights, the old ones which have a choke, you can replace the traditional chokes with the electronic chokes. These are sleeker to look at and at the same time they use less energy, so you are conserving energy. See, every little bit of energy that you save, right, you are making it available for some other use or for some other person to use. Similarly, when you are using fans, there used to be the old fan regulators which you had to turn manually and now you are getting the electronic regulators for fans also. These electronic regulators are much more efficient than the old ones and so I am sure you will make a choice which is smart and get the electronic regulators for your fans. Now, I'm sure you must have seen at some time that when the bulbs are installed for a long time, in India there's a lot of dust and dirt which accumulates on any surface that is there. And the surface of the bulb is also a surface which catches a lot of dust and dirt. Now, this reduces the light that becomes available to you. If you keep a little bit uh, alertness and keep removing the dust and the dirt and keep cleaning your light fixtures, you are able to save energy because when the bulb is giving you the energy through a dirty surface, you tend to, you know, put in a bulb of a higher wattage. So you're using more energy. But if you keep the surface clean, you're getting the same amount of light in a lower wattage. So be smart and keep the surfaces clean. Keep removing the dust and the dirt. Also, you must have seen that you do not need the same amount of light in a room at all times. There are times when you just relax and there are times when you are reading. When you are reading, you want a sharper light to read. But when you are just sitting and talking and chatting with your friends, you need a dimmer light. So use dimmer switches to adjust the amount of light according to your needs and you can also use the colors of the walls to improve the lighting. How is that possible? When you use light colors on the walls, the light is reflected against that light surface. So you get more light from a tube light of a lower wattage. Another trick that you can try is to use a light color for the walls in your rooms. How does that help? Because this will help you in reducing the lighting requirement by up to 40%. Think about it. If you are having a dark red color or a blue color on your walls, you consume up to 40% more light. But if you have a light yellow color or a white wall, it will reflect the light and you will be able to save up to 40% of the light that is being used. Now, I'm sure you have a refrigerator at home. Everyone does. It is required to keep the food from spoiling. But do you have a refrigerator that is appropriate to the needs of the family? A big family needs a big refrigerator, which needs more power and energy to run. But a small family can make do with a small refrigerator, which means less power consumed. So if it is a small family having a big refrigerator, that is so much of power wasted. So conserve the power and use a refrigerator of an appropriate size according to your family needs. You know how much of need you have to store food in the refrigerator. So get a refrigerator of an appropriate size. Once you have a refrigerator, 
Use it smartly. Don't allow the children or even the adults to keep opening the fridge door frequently. When you are using it yourself, plan what you need to put in or take out and do it at one go instead of keeping on opening the fridge repeatedly. Why is this important? Because the more you open the fridge, the more energy is conserved, is needed to maintain the temperature inside the fridge. So if you keep it closed, that means the temperature inside the fridge is maintained and less energy is used. Also, today we have the frost-free refrigerators which are running very efficiently, but there are also in the market some refrigerators which are not frost-free and require constant defrosting. When the freezer cabinet of the fridge is frosted up, there's a lot of ice inside it, the cooling coils are coated with ice and so much more energy is required to then maintain the temperature inside the fridge. So the smart thing to do is to keep defrosting your fridge repeatedly and regularly, keep it free of ice so that it runs on the least amount of energy that is required. So there are two tips we've given you in using the refrigerator. I'm sure you're going to use them in your life. Also, today, with many women working outside the home, there is a strong need to have a washing machine. It is being used even by women who are staying at home because it reduces the amount of labor that goes into washing the clothes. But are you using a washing machine which is appropriate to your family need? And are you using the washing machine at an appropriate load? If you overload it, there is again more consumption of energy or if you are using the machine with a very low load, again you are wasting the energy. So decide how much of clothes you have to wash. Do you have a full load? If not, wait for a day. Maybe you can do the laundry after two days, but when you have a proper load. So be smart. See that you are using a proper load in your washing machine. A hot shower is so very welcome in the cold, long winters we have. But when you are using the geyser, are you using the shower? To have a hot char or are you doing the smart thing and using the water mixed in a bucket? Use two taps, the hot water tap and the cold water tap, mix the water in a bucket and then have your bath. Because when you have a geyser char, a hot char straight from the geyser, you are making the geyser work that much longer. The longer it works, the more energy it uses. So use it smartly and conserve the energy that you are uh, using to run your geyser at home. The same thing applies if you have a hammam, which is a storage kind of a geyser kept on the floor or if you're using an immersion rod. So use it sparingly only as much as you want. Remember when we are using the air conditioner at home, which many people do today, right? We tend to keep it on for long periods at a stretch. But if we use the air conditioner to just maintain the room temperature at a comfortable temperature or if we can switch it off even for one hour during the day, then we can ensure that a 40 watt tube light can be kept on for 50 hours. Just think about it. A 40 watt tube light can be kept on for 50 hours by the simple act of keeping my air conditioner off for one hour. I can do without it. But many people need that tube light to be on for 50 hours. I can do that. You can do that. Let's do it. Again, ironing the clothes, very important. We do that at home. We use energy to run the electric uh, iron. So when we are doing it, instead of going back and forth and collecting the clothes, do all that is required before you begin your ironing. So you don't have to waste time. In during the time, the iron is not unnecessarily kept on. Again, you are conserving the energy used in the iron. There are other electrical equipments that we use at home. The hair dryer to keep your hair styled, blow dried. The oven in which you cook tasty dishes for the children. The vacuum cleaner 
to clean, clean your own home. So use them all sparingly. Do without it if you can, but if you need to use them, then use them sparingly so that you are able to conserve energy, which is very important. And every little bit of energy that you conserve is being spared for use by some other person at the same time. And again, the appliances that you use in your home, please ensure that they are ISI marked, that they are not substandard appliances because the substandard or the non-ISI marked appliances may have components which are inefficient and consume more electricity. So if you use standardized products, you are very sure that you are getting energy efficient components that are used within them and hence you are not over utilizing the energy to run those appliances. Now the ISI mark Earlier it was the Indian Standards Institute, now called the Bureau of Indian Standards. The BSI issues an ISI mark to electrical appliances which guarantees energy savings. So in the kitchen use the ISI marked cooking stoves only. They are not only safe to use, they are energy efficient as well. So all round it becomes a win-win situation for you. If you are in a rural area or if you are using wood to cook your food, the Unnath Chula, which is also a smokeless chula, would be a better choice than an open wood chula because they help you to conserve uh, energy and give about 20 to 25 more heat to cook your food. So your food not only cooks faster but you are also healthy because it is a smokeless chula. The smoke doesn't get into your eye and your eyes and lungs and health ensures your health as well. Another little tip that I can share with you is that instead of using the wooden or the LPG uh, chula to cook your food, you can also use solar cookers. Now in India, we have solar energy sunshine, which is abundantly available and it is free. As of now, yes, no one is charging you anything. So you can use this free and abundantly available solar energy uh, in the solar cookers and cook your food. Comes out very tasty. All the nutrients are conserved in it and you have food which is cooked without a cost. If you do not have a solar cooker, well, at least use a pressure cooker. The pressure cooker and the separators cook the food faster, they save time and at the same time they save your fuel as well. Now we are talking about fuel that you use in the kitchen to cook your food. So pressure cookers are a must, you must use them. And if you are able to use the separators within a pressure cooker, you are able to also cook more dishes in one time. And at the same time, save the gas or any other fuel that you're using to cook your food. Also today, what we have and we see in the market are the sandwich uh, bottom pans or the copper butter pans, they are more heat sensitive. So what does that mean for you? It means that when you put the pan on the gas, they are able to heat faster, they retain heat more and they cook the food faster. So you are able to maybe cook your food in five minutes instead of the eight minutes that the other pans would have taken. So you're saving your gas and the fuel that you're using to cook your food. Also, what you must do is while using the gas, you must first place your pan on the gas and then switch it on. And before you are removing the pan from the gas, you must switch off the gas. It might be just five seconds or 10 seconds that it all takes, you know, but every second counts. So every second that you are able to conserve the fuel that you're using, you are making it available for future use. So do that, place the pan on the gas and then switch it on. Switch off the gas before you remove the pan. Also, when you are using the gas, you must ensure that the burners are clean. The holes sometimes get clogged because of food that spills over onto the burner and the, the holes get blocked. 
once the holes are blocked then the food takes longer to cook because the gas is available only from fewer holes and the efficiency of the burner reduces. So make sure that you are cleaning the gas frequently and the burners uh, holes are kept clean. What you can also do is switch off the knob on the gas cylinder at night. Sometimes there are very imperceptible leaks from the gas cylinder. Maybe it is not dangerous, but it could become dangerous. That is the first consideration. The second one is that if at all there is a leak, then you are plugging it, you are keeping it safe and at night you are not going to be using the cylinder at all. So it makes sense to switch off the gas cylinder at night and making yourself and your family safe and conserving the gas in the cylinder. As a homemaker, as a mother, as a person who is managing the kitchen and serving the food, try and have your family eat the food that you have cooked straight after you have cooked it. How is that going to help you in energy conservation? Because if you cook the food and keep it, it becomes cold, but you want to serve hot food to your family. So you will have to reheat it. And what are you doing when you reheat it? You are again using energy. So if you cook the food and serve it to your family and enjoy it while it is still hot, it is the best. At some other point, we will talk about how the nutrients are also affected when you reheat the food, but that is in some other program. Now, when you save energy and fuel, you save on your energy bills. So when we talk of saving in terms of money, the first thing that we do is save energy and save your money. So we pay less bills and we are able to save the money for other things. Now in this film, in this session, we have talked about how we can individually do a little bit in conserving the energy that we use at home and thereby making it available for our own use and for use by other people around us. At the same time, we are also able to save on the bills that we are paying for using the energy. So this is all that we have today for you. Thank you.